on this season's finale of Forever I Do. We get fixed to Friday night. So we're going to talk to you probably like on Wednesday-ish. So we really only got one day together, like Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And then by Friday night, we're vexed again. That was a proper call. It's an ongoing thing. It was yeah. an afterward job. Yes. I was supposed to host at 7 till 9. But I wouldn't come after 9. I would come way after 1 or so. Mm -hmm. And every week she said the same thing. Why can't you come home at the end of the afterward job? Mm -hmm. Most weddings is the best part of the wedding. Is the group of friends who sit way at the back. <laughs> you know that, that table there? The table where if you every time glass you knock at them start it, any road you behave, yeah, at them that, that are your that are your go-to section. You know? That's the table that's going to keep the wedding like exciting. And I love that table. And this is Forever I Do. For Ian and Karen Ellis, marriage is about compromise. And after 22 years, their challenges prove true love never dies. Fan a bus. <laughs> you sure? We, well, you know what? He says on a bus. I was off the bus. <laughs> when he was well, watching me from I, on the bus. I listen, I, I took the bus at Bridgeport and I was traveling to, King, to Halfway Tree. She was at Edgewater. For those who don't live in Portmore, Bridgeport is before Edgewater if you're going towards Beach. When we got to Edgewater, I saw her outside the bus and I saw her and she came onto the bus. I didn't say anything the whole trip because I said, oh, what's, what's going to be the first word? Eh? And when she come up on the bus, a half a tree, going to work and I said, can I come? Those three words, can I come? Is that started? I looked at him and smiled because, you know, he had a nice voice, I must say, and all of that. <laughs> yeah, that's So it's like a, in a nice tone, can I come with you with a smile on his face? Yeah. So, you know, I smiled back and then that was it. That was it. I never get, I never I never get, see a, again. I never get a number or no. anything at the time. Mm -hmm. No, so you know, that was difficult. But then I saw her again. A year after. Uh, a, a year after. A couple months after. A couple months. That wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a year. But somehow I found where she was working. That was very important. Young men, if you don't get a number, find out the place of a board or the place of employment. Very, very important. So I find out that was great. You know what? Let me tell you. I went to buy a shoe. It was yes. a place for shoes. Place for shoes that was working I went to buy a shoes with um, yes. my, my co workers and I saw her. And I got excited again. In Premier Plaza. In Premier yes. Plaza, yeah. Yes. I got excited again when I, when I bought that shoe. I can't forget that shoe. I said at the top already. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, I, 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 I remember that this is the, the same young lady I met. So I don't know what I said at that time. But I, I, I tried to invite her out, yes. I don't think at that no. point. Mm -mm. No. It was not Let me point. tell you what happened. All right. After he left the store, I don't think, I think he came there to check out the sh a shoe. Yeah. Yes, and then after um, he leave the store, um, just before work finished, I think work finished at six, five, six, yeah. I got a phone call. Oh, I remember this is not me, you know, this is not yes. me. Karen, here's a call for you. And, and um, when I answered her phone, I heard, um, hi Karen. I'm like, hello, who is this? So, this is Ian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And from there on, um, it started. Yeah. Starts so then he out. knows where, where he know where I was working. Yeah. No, my name no. Yeah. I didn't know my name. No, that's true. Until they came by the store. Yes. yes. Yeah, I that she was kind. Yes. And and I think 
after you know that I was I, I was at that store, you start coming there every lunch time. Yes, now, yes, yes, that's true. Yes, man. Every lunch time we find out. Oh, yeah. One day, and I remember day, day and one day, and you used to go lunch, and every day them come. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not coming for lunch. You're coming to lunch with us. Yeah. Yes. And then now I used to have arguments with Carl and guys. Some days I'm tired of going to sir. I said, no, wait, wait, wait. Actually, you want to take your shoes, sir. Your shoes, sir. <laughs> 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 yes, so I think that's where it started. Yes, and then I started. Then lunch with him, and then I yeah. think it's after that now. Then but, you, but, you, you can't him, forget you know. yeah, to, the, to the play. And it's, it's a good thing she didn't come to that play because it was a play made God rest his soul. Fred Hickling had a show called Culture, Culture, Culture Knocks or something black out to remind me. And my role was I was playing uh, not spectator, but you know, in that dance hall where they said I was I was a, I was a member of the dance. So so I would be inside the, the, the aisle. So I invited her to come and see me perform because it was the first time I'm in a play. But I'm happy that she didn't come because because I was in the aisle, people come to sit down and ask me, you know, where we sit. You know, I'm like, I'm still, I'm in, I'm in the show. You know? She didn't come to that one. The first one she came to us is is, is friends to see our first right. date. Our first when to see friends starring Glenn Campbell. Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember when he came by the store and he was asking me for a couple um, yeah. days now. A good if while. I, yeah, if I can't go to him and Oh, not yet, I can't, you know, I don't know. Yeah. And I was telling her that I talked to um, a girlfriend, Paul, and I said, what do you think? I met this guy, you know, he's nice and everything. And, you know, what if I should go with him? And she was like, that's a common man, because I wanted to invite her to the play as well. I said, no, you go with him and get to know him and, you know, support. And then, right after, uh, I think I called you back and yeah. said, yes, I was coming. You came by the store for lunch. Yes, yes. And then that's when you told me yes in the store. In the store. I left. Let me tell you something. I left excited. <laughs> I never see somebody run so fast. <laughs> yes. One of my co-workers said to me, sir, come here, Karen. I'm going to tell the guy to say where they go. Make him so happy. Run out of the store happy. I said, I'm going to leave. I said, I just said yes, I'm both with you. And I tell you something, yes. that, that first time on friends, the relationship almost spoiled right there because I laughed. He might want to know why. Because I laughed no. The sound of my laughter was a very unique one. I don't know if it still is. I just like him laugh weird. Yeah, even. Like, yeah, even though when I tell my girls, Natalia, Natalia, like, Mommy, so you really do with him after you hear him laugh? So. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. it was so funny. I'm like, my gosh, you like load with you know, yeah. it's funny. We laugh, laugh, laughing, no, laugh, 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 to me, but at the time you married me, you know, and I, I almost resented that. I would say, if you know, when I pressure me for marriage, the marriage now I want, you know. So, when the first time I noticed that she wasn't interested in saying, Well, we've been together for this because I mean, we got married six years after after meeting, yes. so yes. she wasn't yes. the, the one to do that. And I, I admired that personally, mm -hmm. uh, and because the relationship was developing, so yeah. we were friends, we had come back to start to enjoy. Mm -hmm different things together yeah. I mean we had one child at that point too so all those things for me was you know and then I saw who she was as a mother because I think that I always say you can you can meet her but you know you don't know you don't know all the aspects until you see all the aspects so, so I think that was the beginning for me say so, yeah I began to think at that time that she was the person to spend the rest of my life and you know we're living together at the time you know after the six years we're living together we had our first our first child so I mean I think I knew a lot about him you know and you know I like most things about him and we, we, we were we were like tight-knit we, we, we love we love going out we, we, we had so much um commonalities then we, we like the same things so yeah we were enjoying each other company so much and you know he he was a good listener still is you know so I like a lot of qualities in him then and and, and I say yes this this is it. I, I should say though that um 
when I met him, like getting to know him, you know, like when we used to go on lunch, one of the things that struck me with him was like, I was saying, oh, this guy's so mature, because you know, he wasn't my first um, boyfriend. And when when I met him, I'm like, oh, this guy's so mature, the things that he's talk about, and you know, he's encouraging, and you know, you could tell him anything. It's like, we couldn't wait for, for work to finish, to meet up with each other. It's like, you know, somebody always wants to talk to, he's likable, it's like, you, you, you just want to be with him. You just want to talk with him all the time, you yeah. know. So all these things, you know, and watching him, watching him as a father too, you know. How you know it was not only our first daughter, and you know how loving he was. As they always oh, a good quality, he's a good father, and all of that stuff. So, yes, so those things. I remember when I when. I planned the engagement, bought the ring, hide it in my drawer. Mm -hmm. My box was drawer her, God knows you don't search my drawer hers. And it was there for some time. Mm -hmm. And I planned the proposal and it was this choke of midnight. Mm -hmm. I went and I took a taxi, you know, when I have a car. Mm -hmm. I went up there and I waited until there was a countdown. Ten, nine, eight. And I said, will you marry me? Oh no, she not <laughs> I tell you to this day, she didn't answer. <laughs> she froze. You know? That's true. You know, she froze. And one year later, the exact date was January 1st, yes. got engaged. And January 1st, uh, we got married. So I will come together and we say we're going to spend the rest of our lives together. So the unique personality traits that have to come and, and find uh, commonality to find. So we can complement each other. It's a challenge already from the get-go. But first, Jerry Benswick tells us how to take your date with Speak. It's all on the wedding MC to make it fun and unique. It's really about the, the, the realness of it. You know, people make these decisions and take these steps to get married. And it's for life. So, you know, it, it, there's a warmness about it, and that's part of what brought me. Because me, me, I tend to be a little bit sentimental uh, when it comes to things like that. So yeah, it's different. Mm -hmm. right? I, it's a standard question I ask every couple that I talk to when I'm in the MC. And you gonna turn to the woman with the man present and say, you love him? And she goes, uh, yeah. I'm going to say, no, sound sure. You sure you want to marry him? And she goes, of course, I'm married. And, and the conversation starts from there. That, that, that important factor is yeah, in this moment, we're deep in love and we want to come together. So, as an MC, for me, it is about what they have for each other. And I can build from there. So, I don't have a, a script, but it's based on their personalities. And then um, you, you kind of want, you want to get to know them. So, you ask them a couple questions about each other or themselves. And like, I love when they tell me the story of how they met. Especially with a couple I don't know personally in, from a long time. You know, some people you know as a friend, you know their story, you know where they come from. And it's easy. You just walk in and start talking things. And it's, it's cool. But when it's someone who's a stranger who you've never met, I know they, they want you to come and they feel very tentative, concerned. Because they want their way to go well and they know the MC is a major part of the you know, ceremony. And it's a big responsibility, you know, because they want it to be fun or they want it to be properly followed according to protocol as how things are on the script and everything. You know. So, for me, when I talk to couples about getting, when they're getting married and have the discussion with them, I really want to feel their energy, what kind of people are they, when they like and when they don't like. And then I want to ask them about who's the next most important, who's coming to your wedding, who's going to be there, um, and then ask them where they put in there. Because most weddings, the best part of the wedding is the group of friends who sit way at the back. <laughs> you know that, that table there? The table where if you, every time glass you knock at them start it, any wrong behavior at them not, that are your, that are your go to section. But that's the table that's going to keep the wedding like exciting and I love that table and then funny enough I went to a wedding one time and there was a table like that but it wasn't a bunch of friends it was a bunch of old people but not old people mature people who were family members but there was a rowdy bunch and they were at this one family table and the boy coming out of 
family. They were my mom and him. They say, you see. And they were carrying on and going. And I was like, yeah, I might deal with this. <laughs> I actually chose to go sit with them. So they gave me all the juicy stories. So I could throw them back and, and go banter with them and stuff. And it makes for a good way. And it's about them. It's 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 a it's a bride day. There's nothing about it that makes the man the highlight of the moment. <laughs> He's just there as a nice, you know, well just dude who sits and has to do the protocol, but it's really about the woman. Because everything is really about her. There are times when the man is, is talked about and he has to do this and that. But it's really a woman's festivity. It's really about that moment when a man takes a woman and so she's highlighted. It's really about her, in our culture at least. Um, so for me, it's it's really about getting that personality of her and him together, highlighting what she's about, highlighting what they are about. So whatever they like should be what is flourished in the whole vibe, you know? One of the most memorable would be uh, I went, I went to Clarinda um, and uh, it was time for the bouquet to be thrown. And I said to them, hey, bouquet time now, so, you know, I'm going to throw the bouquet. And then the women, you see the ladies come out and they're all lined up and being and I was like, remember now people, you have to stretch before you do this thing, you don't want to pull a muscle. This is an event. And we do the countdown, as usual, as most weddings do. And um, but the bride threw the bouquet over her head. And here's a lovely, beautiful looking bunch of single women. And one woman in particular basically does an NFL wide receiver run through the crowd of ladies from the back. You know when an NFL wide receiver goes for the ball, their eyes are focused just on the ball. She's focused on the bucket and she dashes forward, knocks. One lady, I'm seeing this in slow motion in my head. I watch it. And when I replay it, I can't see it no other way, but in slow motion. She knocks one lady's shoulder, and so the lady's shoulder turns so She kind of slides between two other women and then reaches up for the bucket. But it's in the air and coming down into another lady. So by going up for it, she knocks her over catches it, tucks and rolls, and pops up with it and says, me catch it. <laughs> when you look behind her, it's like a truck run through a crowd. <laughs> we said, oh, whenever I come up, people are helping people, and I check if they, if they match up, they're disheveled. And she does a smile, and I will me catch it. <laughs> For me, those wow moments come from different places. A little kid might come up and say they want to say something. And I've said the thing and the whole room meant. It comes from either a speech given by somebody in a toast or um, just the groom probably running somewhere and coming back with something for his wife. Um, the, 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 the chief bridesmaid doing something absolutely fabulous in the moment. Uh, the best man, you know, Instead of dabbing and taking care of the groom, he runs down over and takes care of the bride. You know, or he, he, the best man goes and fix something that is out of place, takes care of it, and the groom is and the bride are sitting there and they don't even know that there's a problem. Or the lady, them least expect for broke out, run up by the dance floor first and bend over, and that's our wild moment in itself. <laughs> so it's, it's, it varies, it varies. I think it bases on your preference as a couple. And it's something you need to talk about. Do you want an MC who is hilarious, absolutely funny, it's just gonna give up 100 percent jokes right to the night? And part of the issue with giving jokes at a wedding is that you have different styles of MCs. You have some MC where they come with a, a catalogue of jokes where they memorize and they can tell you pull from any catalogue where they have with them kind of track jokes. Then you have other MCs like myself. Who kind of go with the flow at the moment and the jokes come to me and the moment comes to me. So it depends on what you want. But do you want an MC who is just gonna follow the script and go according to plan? It's based on your preference. But what I would suggest is that you have an MC who is engaging and pleasant and can keep 
the people who you have invited to celebrate with you happy and to you happy. Don't over plan what your MC is to do. If you, if you plan everything to the letter, including what the MC is supposed to do, and do this and tell me that thing, then it's like you're putting your MC on a narrow path, and if he strays from it, then it becomes a problem. That can, can kill your MC's energy, because he's not being forced to follow your order. But if, you, if you're free spirited about it and say to your MC, you will take care of us, right? That's the kind of person, if you have the right MC, that will say to you, I got you. And they will give you 100% more than you bargained for. So if you want to reach me, you can do so on Instagram at Jerry Benswick or on Facebook, Jerry Benswick. Hi, I'm Jerry Benswick, and you're watching Forever I Do. Thank you so much, Jerry. Now let's get back to our couple, Ian and Karen. I was sharing with Yana and person person said, well, Karen, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. They, you know, most of them, they were telling me to leave, but they were saying, boy, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. I guess because of my job, I, I tried to block out certain things because, like Ian said, persons would see us and they would think that I have friends that they didn't even, if I don't tell them that he's going on with anything, they wouldn't even know. And sometimes I even ask myself, how do you do this? Because he's not sleeping out. He's going to be there at the dinners and everything. And you know, we, on a Friday, we have a, a, a date night where every Friday we go to the movie, every Friday. So we go to the movie and then, you know, before movie, then he will go on his own or, you know, stuff like that. But I mean, it, it, he's a piece, he was so private with it that you would never even know. But then people didn't know that I was hurting. So I didn't show it. So even though I was in the house and you, you ask the question, so you live in the house, you know, with him. But it's like more time I said to him, say, we're only living here, you know, but we're not together. Is that like more three or four times I said, we left round three or four times already, you know. But we just step up, we just <laughs> occupy the space with here, I think uh, some of them here say. But it's true. People don't understand you live in the house and they see you go out there, you and uh, you, you, you're together and you're doing all these family things and stuff, but they don't know that most times they are hurting the wives or whoever is hurting you know but i was hurting and but i didn't show it person wouldn't know that i was hurting that was a, but then it got rough yes. it got rough because yes. when um i, I can't speak first when my career got in the way i became popular i was touring i was going all over the place and i think this one and Shana, i was talking and i said which is the worst period of our life and it was my asylum day, mm. a nightclub called asylum yes. i hosted yes on a Friday night. And let me tell you something, Dana. When I go on a Friday, we get vexed on Friday night. So when I talk to me, probably about Wednesday-ish. So we really only got one day together, like Thursdays. And then by Friday night, we vex again. That was a proper call me. Ongoing thing. It was an yeah. afterward jam. Yes. I was supposed to host at 7 until 9. But I wouldn't come after 9. I would come way after 1 or so. And every week she said the same thing. Why can't you come home at the end of the afternoon? Mm -hmm. And it was tough for us. I tell you what, there's, there's a James Ingram song. He said, Just once, I don't care. See. But he said, can, can we figure out what we doing wrong? Why the good time never lasts long? Where are we going wrong? And that's how we're our auntie. Because no we get to a period of time, we get to over it and it got rough again. And it was my mistakes for the most part. I mean, mm -hmm. All the time, so no, it, it was rough for us. When you said earlier that to reach a point where you said, Why well, that's it. It, 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 it was a tough time for us. But that you see, a lot of we live a life publicly, but obviously, that life that we live privately that we know and we only know, and we know the rough time, we know the tears that we go through, and that's what I want to quickly say. The way you see marriages and you see them looking like yes. sometimes there are couples who live in the same house but they just occupy yes. the same house sure. but, but they're going through some, some rough things sure. but yeah. I admire her because when I ask her even though I said why did you stay during those rough times and the one thing she said to me that I said well, I'm just saying, you know, I made a commitment to you I wasn't even asking myself where was my commitment but I said I made yeah. a commitment and I was just simply honoring my commitment. 
like I said, even though we were going through through um, challenges and all those things, we were still because I said it, it's like you know somebody tell us that sorry, he's one of those person. He apologized like right. Is that I, I stop believing now? All right, stop. Don't tell me no more. Why not going to again? This, you know, and it's, he's just that type of person. I mean, you know, because I don't know, he's so such a sweet person that it, he knows how to put things around and make you feel like, all right, then. I guess, all right, then. Okay, okay. You kind of start feeling like you, you say, you know? But it's, it's just that, you know? So I, I don't know how to explain it, honestly, but you just know that once he comes around and he apologizes and he say, all right, then, I'm going to just go through this again you know, one more time. And then the turnaround time, I think it started when we went on a trip to Bahamas. It started there. And he, I think he put something on Facebook yeah. to so say, okay, the then start tell everybody now. So if you're brave now, yeah. you know, you must show me up now, yeah. you know, but not see me. Of course, they know that he was married. But you know, they never ever said why. Because I'm a more private person. I'm, you know, behind the scene. I don't like the out and about things. So they would see us together, but they wouldn't see me with him certain places. But I don't go to certain places, but like dance all over. You're not going to see me those places. So when we went to, when I saw him put that post on, on Facebook and, you know, most of the platform, the social media platform, I said, oh, okay then. Yes, yeah, this was our anniversary. And he put that out. Was kind of like okay, so he's trying to tell the world something now. And this must be that he's really sorry I didn't really I come around now. So that was it for me. And then, but then after that, failure, yeah. <laughs> back to square one again. So it's like it's like I tell you, it's, it's a, it was an ongoing thing, you know, really ongoing. So we're going really through some really serious challenges. But the turnaround but, began there. The turnaround with Danny. I started seeing Santa. Oh, he looked like him, you know. And then, what was it again? It was your birthday one year. Yes, that was December. a tough year. Yes. Oh, December. then, then because of, of, of that, I think I decided. I, that's it. That's it. So I wasn't, I said, somebody said, you know what, Karen, just leave him. Just don't really focus on him. And then I started to go to church now. Um, I mean, he used to come to church. We, we, like I said, we do things together. People wouldn't even know. So we got church together. The family is going to church. So we are always going to church. So people not even know. Say, not, not, you know, we do, we're the loving family. Nice, you know, couple and everything. So, of course, we have a church. But then, no, I decided that, you know, him still have all them foolishness. We find some a space at church. It was safe. I felt safe when I'm there. I started talking to the the, um, the, the, the pastor and you know getting to know the person at the church and you know I found comfort there. Yes, and I said hey, this is my place. I can't wait for my head anymore. You know, so do what you do what you want. I, I was in New I, York, you know. I was said I was in New York. Yeah. Then. When she got baptized, you know, and I think my friend, one of them, sent the picture to me. Yes. To see your wife came up and said, she alright. <laughs> yeah, I was there. I was in New York as well, and I came down. And I said, yeah, this is it now. Yeah. I'm moving yeah. on. Yeah. I'm doing this stuff. Yeah. And I, I decided I'm going back to get a Christian. I'm going to get a baptized. And my daughter, my mother, daughter, and sister, we both got baptized together. And that was it. We just living our life. You know, the few things we had to think but we still have a little fun the same way because we're going to go the same way. We're going out. So we're still in the house, we, you know? But like I said, we live in separate lives. People don't even know that. And um, until I think, um, I don't remember how many. Well, I mean, obviously, during that time, I was watching you go to church and yes. feeling like, okay, you know. I am not going to allow her decision to impact mine. Yes. I will come in my own time yes. if I so choose yes. to come. Yes. She should not feel that because she's married to me and she's she's now saved and sanctified. <laughs> I'm gonna follow suit. So I was even more stubborn. Yes. And that's unfortunate because why would I do that now when I I, I took them to the church? Yes. You know, so I was rebelling. But you know, prayers, the yes. love that was would have spoken to my heart and, and I followed so several months later and that was a turnaround and for that was me. the big turnaround that was a big turnaround yes. for me yes. because 
and it was a, it was no one can speak about it because I've done about five years now. Uh, May, last May is five years. 2016. 2015, you were baptized. Yes. So five years now, last now. So I'm heading to five years now. It 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 took time for us to realize that it is we are experiencing a change. Yes. yes. I, I, I think it took a number of uh, uh, years for Kyle to say it looked like he's serious about this this change. Yeah, because even when he came, you know, gave his life, I'm like, yeah, we still are watching because you know, you know, <laughs> the things are, you know, so you really. But then I think he went to a show in England, I think, and I think he was praying for somebody. He yeah. prayed for somebody yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And he sent me the video. And I tell you, when I listened to the video, I said, No, this is a change. I said, No, this is happening. Yeah, what I want. I said, Me not know this person. That prayer just changed everything. Yeah. Yes, and I, I, I so realized I that. that yeah, I always talk about that prayer. And, and I said, No, this is a change, man. And from then on, Everything changed, I tell you. If we used to post, if we, it's like things that we used to do, it's like it just turned around. It's like we live a sad, sad moment. Like even if anything go wrong, you wonder if it, and we still post, don't believe say yeah, we still have argument. But I tell you, we never remember them. We don't even remember the argument. It's the first time we're living that I, I, I interrupt because I want to make this point that we don't sleep. You know, people say don't go to bed upset. We yes. literally don't. Yes. If you get upset about whatever they yes. buy it, yes. just you know. And remember, when we are at our bench, I probably don't want to say this. I was alone. Yes, yes, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, if you're on TV, if you have one of them, terrible, terrible, terrible man. I wasn't quite. I don't care, my man. Yeah. People say, what? She said, go on, say, 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 Remember, no, we are together for 28 years. We're married for 22. Mm -hmm. January coming will be 23 years. Mm -hmm. So we're not that one now because we yeah. died together. It's yeah. a long time together. Yes. Yes. You know what? I don't know. It, it would be her experience, but I, I'm going daughters. And, and I was saying, whoa, if the son, if the son, if the son's in law, or if, if the young man that I'm going to be meeting, who my daughters are going to be introduced to me to, have any show any sign of some aspect of the kind of man I was being, I know that I would not be tolerant. I yearn to, to live a life that could be a kind of man for them to see. Say, hey, the good thing though, my daughters, they will tell you, they don't have no report. What we got, we got to never affect them yes. because you know, it wasn't from up where we stand because what they saw was us going on together, you know what I mean? They heard the arguments and all, but it wasn't that kind of, you know, that kind of yeah, abuse that they would say here, yeah, you know, yeah. the normal physical. So, um, for me, that was my, it's a conscious thought. I said, you know, if I, they are good up now. So they are good up now, I mean, so I'm saying, if they get to a certain age with this kind of thing, then, you know, what are they gonna be like towards me? And we have good relationship. Listen to we have good relationship. I would want to to spoil that because of it. so that was a critical part of it for me. But so I really thank God for that too because know that there is none to report where they are concerned. They just hear about these things, but what they see is a different thing. So that for me was a, a big turnaround. I wanted to to ensure that they cannot say that but that about you, you know what I mean? I wanted to for them to see a change so that when I live a certain standard that I expect from them in their selection. So, you know what I mean? Then why would you want to do that? Knowing that I can't choose for them, but to say, hey, find the standard, you know? I'd have to try and live some of that standard for them. Like Ian said earlier, it's a commitment. It's, you have to be committed. I tell myself before I got married that I'm going to go on a marriage one time. Mm, so because it's, yes, one time. So. It is not something that I think before you get into a marriage, you have to, and even when you think you know the person, but get to know them first. Don't just rush into anything. Yes. You know, yes. know, know what you're getting into, know a little about, know the background. You know, it took us six years, 
and, and, and even with the six years, we still didn't know as much about each other. Even now, we're still learning stuff about each other. But get to know something about the person. Don't rush into it. You know, most persons that rush into people are, oh yeah, environment, this environment. No, it's not about that. It's a commitment that you're going to make. And, and another thing is, uh, when we're getting married, one of the main points, I remember his brother said, if I, we, 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 we had disregard, we didn't even remember about that until yeah. years after we become a Christian. And his brother said, if you don't have God in it, it's not going to work. And we are testimony, we can testify to that. To yeah, yeah. say, since we put God at the top, yes, it's yes. working for us. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. And we ignore that statement because we think embodiment. Yeah. Yes. Make sure God and I, yes. there are some of the wedding to come. Make yes. sure God and I. But yes. we heard that too. Yes. And ignore that because, and, you know, I'm yeah. a brother. You know? Yeah. For me, marriage, like her, is a commitment. And marriage to me is a, a sacrifice that we, as a man, you really need to sacrifice your compromise. That's what I'm talking about. It, it, it's compromise. It's recognizing that, hey, two persons come together from different backgrounds. You have two different fathers, two different mothers, a mother and father. You have a mother and father, two different backgrounds. And we'll come together and we say we're going to spend the rest of our lives together. So the unique personality traits are going to come. And, and find a uh, commonality to find so we can complement each other. It's a challenge already from the get go. There's two different human beings. So for me, the first thing you have to embrace and engage with is compromise. Recognize I won't have it all my way all the time. You know, you have to find some balance. If, if, because if, if, if you don't compromise, then you, you, you know, in a marriage, you're living your life. Marriage, you live a single life, you know. So that, that's a critical thing for me. Married to the commitment, and I learned that love is a verb. And I also learned that in marriage, whatever gets you there, to, you have to continue to do that to stay there. I'm the kind of guy who I, I, I buy the flowers and the gift basket, the Valentine's Day, the birthday, the Mother's Day. It's this year I learned, I must say this very interesting. <laughs> this year I didn't buy anything for Mother's Day because my children be know it's your mother, my mother, full mother. So I don't buy anything for her. I'm going to say, you know. I mean, I see it, you know, not because, you know. I said, hold on, what are you saying? And you mean, yes, she, she get used with all these mother's days. So, why stop? Don't stop. I learned, don't stop. Don't. I, 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 I had good reason. Brothers are big now. Them should celebrate their mother. <laughs> when they were younger, you did all, all these years, you know. Yeah. I said, okay, I, I'll stick to the birthday and the Valentine's Day. No, 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 no. Don't stop. Whatever you used to do that, that she likes, you know, the sun yes. says, James, you know, again, compliment what she does, send her roses, find 100 ways to, to, to love her. That's a critical component of a successful marriage. You know, there's a book that Gary Chapman wrote about the five love language, and you know, people receive and experience love differently. But once you find out what it is that it is, that's her love language. Make sure you speak that love language in your action. Or in, you know, sure. Uh, he's he's yeah. a the, the, the person who professes love. Profess. Yes, he's not afraid to do it. And I, I love that about him. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ian and Karen. Here's to many more years of happiness and wedded bliss. Hi, we're, we're Ian, Ian and, and Karen, and, and you're, you're watching, watching Forever, Forever I Do. And that's how we wrap up this season of Forever I Do. I'm Dimitri. And I'm Sandri. I'm Trevor. And I'm Andrea. Hi, I'm we're Andre and, and Lisa. We're Lynn and Lita Gay. And we're Twain and Tamika. We're Lynn and Yolan. This is Eva and Michelle. We're Asta and Keisha. Hello, this is Julian and Trudy. And we're Eric and Nicole. Keith and Rose. Hi, Hi. we're the we're Clarks. The Clarks. Thanks to all of our couples for sharing their amazing stories and for enlightening us on all things love, marriage, and weddings. Thanks also to our wedding purveyors with their great tips and advice on making that day even more memorable. Thank you so much for watching. See you again next season.
Makeup Services by Nardine Makeup. Coordination and Planning, Shakima Hines of Island Bride, Jamaica. Set Decor, Thai Flora Lux. Forever I Do is filmed on location at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, your wedding destination in Kingston, Jamaica.